Beat that fall. Uh, hey, good morning, all. Welcome to the Common Good Podcast. It's Thursday, May 19th. You might be saying to yourself, well, why are you talking science with astrophysicist Paul Wallace if it's Thursday? Well, we're making some changes around here in our daily schedule. So, uh, you know, sometimes on Thursdays, we're going to talk with the very fine astrophysicist. Good morning, Paul. Nice to see you. Good to see you, too. You know, Science Thursdays doesn't quite have the same ring to it as Science Fridays. It doesn't have quite the same. Yeah, those of us that have been taught the lingo of National Public Radio middays on Fridays feel like so. And there's no reason Science Friday. I mean, it's not one of those, you know. What are those words called when it starts with the same letter or starts with the same sound? It has the has the long I sound in it. Science, science Friday. Friday. Yeah. Well, Science Thursday is a thing we like to talk about around here. Hey, and Paul, when we talk about you know science with you, it's always a treat because we get to pull ourselves uh, up to the skies. And uh, big news today on on black holes. Uh, you sent this great little article where if if yeah. uh, producer Dan were here. He would have this up on the screen. I'll just acknowledge that right off the bat. But producer Dan is um, dealing with COVID, which, by the way, I don't know if I'm supposed to say that or not. It probably violated some HEPA rule or something. But probably. Uh, uh, Dan is, um, you know, he's got a sl- slight case. And so he can't be on air because you don't, we're still not sure how this spreads, right? Like maybe if he's on air, maybe it, maybe it spreads, spreads that way. <laughs> I'm only teasing. Uh, he's just not feeling up to God, it. God, I hope not. But boy, people are getting this COVID thing again. It, I mean, I, I, it, I feel confident that, you know, we've got a handle on it and all the things we do to treat COVID are, are strong enough. But do you have worries at all in your, in your world that COVID is uh, back on the rise? Yeah, a little bit. I'm starting to see some news reports and so forth, but mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know of anybody who's gotten it. And my wife works at a hospital. Oh. A pretty big hospital here in Atlanta, and she hasn't seen any uh, any jump up yet. Um, oh, I just saw. An, I mean, a bunch of people in my life have it uh, more than ever before. I know more people who, in the last I don't know week, really have had COVID than any other previous time. And I was like, "What is?" But no one's in the hospital. No one's super sick. Right. Um, a bunch right. of people have, have gotten it again, like for the second time, or some of them the third time. Dang. Yeah. Uh, so I don't and know. And they're all vaccinated and all that, so the vaccines aren't working on this new thing. Yeah, all the people I know are vaccinated, so at least maybe it's just keeping down the, the effect uh, of it all. Yeah, um, yeah. Hey, but we didn't we didn't do a requisite check-in on the skies and check-in on the air uh, outside, so lovely yeah, right, Ryan. Right. Is it lovely it's hot here? here. It's, it's, it's going to get above 90 here today. Wow. I walked into work from my house, and uh, it didn't have the chill in the air that we had in the mm-hmm. last few days. It's mm-hmm. gonna, yes, but it's very clear. It's super, super blue sky. Well, how right. about you up there? Yeah, we're doing all right. Uh, we've got a nice little run here, mid seventies today. Talking about some. Woo! When, when I asked uh, Alexa last, to be careful. Uh, when I asked, uh, I thought I had an Alexa down here, and boy, yeah, yeah, just yeah. just say her name. I mean, she's like a puppy at the door, just ready to go. Uh, she said, uh, tomorrow's forecast, in just that such soothing tones, tomorrow's forecast is sunny and a chance of thunderstorms. So somehow both yeah. of those things, and I thought, okay, we live in a non-binary world here. You know, we have uh, yeah. sunny and thunderstorms. More than one thing at a time. Yeah, at the same time. Yeah. On um, one day, yeah. All right, well, let's so talk about... did you about, have both? Did you have both? Did you have sun and then storm? Well, that's today that she's she's promising this mixed bag of, you know, postmodern pastiche weather. So it will happen <laughs> uh, It will happen today if that if that does indeed become uh, sunny with thunderstorms, uh, which kind of seems sort of perfect in some ways, right? You know, you get, you just get the, you get the, the whole yeah. feel. Down here, that is basic summer weather. In the mornings, it's clear and every afternoon... And- Five afternoons out of seven. Really? Clouds roll in and we get, you know, 20 minutes of rain. Hmm. Yep. How do you plan yep. for that? How do you how do you organize your life and go, uh, I don't know, biking just, or you golfing? Just, you just, yeah. People who move here are often flummoxed by it. They're like, I see. How can you? Yeah. yeah. But this is what we get. This is what happens. Afternoons are cloudy and thundery and uh, mornings are clear like, like now. Well, Paul, big news uh, this week on the federal government at the congressional level calling 
Pentagon officials to come to a hearing and talk about what they know about uh, currently unidentified, they're not calling them flying objects, but, you know, UFOs, but unidentified, I can't remember the word for it, things that they've seen in the sky. Because there's all these little reports that keep coming out, these little short videos that are being shared around of, like, military pilots seeing things. Oh, like, these aren't just people on YouTube. These are people... Uh, these are actual actual people no, in, that, in planes and stuff. Yeah, they're not people like us that are just on YouTube just, right, just right, talking right, about exactly. stuff. No, 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 no. These are apparently a, a whole lot of military pilots. No, I shouldn't say that. A whole lot of, uh, of stories of military pilots seeing things they can't explain. So you haven't Boy. you haven't you haven't paid a whole lot of attention to these when they when they come rolling through the through the news zeitgeist, have you? you, you no, as an astrophysicist, I, I you're the, uninterested. I, you know, over the course of my time talk, doing this kind of work, I hear about this sort of thing a, a lot, but this this smells a little different. Um, well, I, well, I'm mainly worried about, you know, uh, the conspiracy theorists and all this. I'm more concerned about that than what the lights are. <laughs> yeah, I shifted my conspiracy theories yesterday when I heard about this from... Uh, oh, the conspiracy theorists are trying to tell us that there's intelligent life that only some of us don't know about um, and that it's it's important, <laughs> yeah. which for me is always the hang up. And I'll share more about that in a minute, maybe. But now I've switched my conspiracy theory to what's the government trying to cover up by saying that maybe these unidentified, uh, you know, sky experiences are a real thing. So, you know, if you exactly. Get, but you're not the kind of person I'm worried about. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, that's good to know. Uh, uh, so uh, I know we've chatted about this a little bit before, but because it's in the news, I think some people would like to hear from an astrophysicist and a professor and a, uh, you know, a birder of your caliber. You don't, uh, you don't worry about that there's a whole lot of intelligent life out in the world that we haven't yet seen. You're, that's, that's, not, that's not fussing with you at all. No, not really. Do you, you mean, is it something I spend time thinking about? No, not really. I don't, I, I think much more about birds than I do about intelligent life <laughs> out there. Yeah. 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 No, no, I, no, no, I don't you. because I, I think that it probably exists. Um, but I'm also hugely skeptical that we're ever going to be in contact with it. Hmm. I, I, I'm not sure that, it's, that, that there's another sample in our galaxy. I think we might be the only ones. Have you ever heard of the, the, the Fermi paradox? Enrico Fermi, right? I have heard that phrase, and I, at different points in my life, I knew what the Fermi paradox meant or was. Fermi, but uh, I've forgotten. Enrico Fermi was one of the great, truly towering physicists of the uh, 20th century, and he was having this for now sort of fabled lunchtime discussion with some of his peers, and they were talking about extraterrestrial intelligence. And he said he didn't think it's out there. And they said, why not? He said, well, even if there was one civilization that was one or two million years ahead of us in an evolutionary cosmic sense, that they would have essentially colonized the galaxy by now. And, um, it would, you know, you don't have to be that far ahead of us to have done that. You know, you know a million years would probably be, be plenty sufficient. And that's just that far ahead of us in evolutionary time. So his point is, you know, if they're out, where are they? You know, that was his question. And so he, he believed that it wasn't, that that they weren't in our galaxy at least because of that. Well, they, they are so advanced. The theory goes that they're, they hide themselves from us, (laughs) right? From us. Because that's, that might might, might be wise actually. It might be for our own good. Yeah. I mean, that's why they're, they're cloaking themselves and with their unidentified flying objects. They, the, the thing that, and that, that's basically been my hang up on it too. And we'll just talk for, I don't know, a minute or two more about, you know, sure. uh, UFOs. Um, it's the way I feel about ghosts and um, talking to the previously departed through mediums and so yeah. on, that if that was a thing, UFOs, intelligent life on other planets, other places, um, the dead being able to come back. We wouldn't be guessing about this still. Like we, it, it, they, they would make themselves abundantly a, 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 yeah. available. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what would be the yeah. what would be the point 
Because whatever they've been up to for, if you buy the theory, for 50 plus years that we've known about them in the U.S., you know, since the 1950s, uh, what what have they been accomplishing? Uh, <laughs> right. so, so it just it just seems unreasonable to yeah, believe it. Be so cagey. Yeah, and and what does the government have for for cover? Like you could think that within I don't know, like some short period of time, I don't know if some alien ship ship crashed and they put it inside of a hangar in in New Mexico. Mm-hmm. You could see yourself saying, "Well, they're probably covering that up till they figure out what to do." We would have figured out what to do in the last fifty years. It just doesn't seem yeah. like we'd be covering it up. Yeah, uh, and no, I, no, I, yeah, what the, I'm with you. These these are just not very good. Uh, aliens uh, and and the ghosts no, and, and ghosts ghosts are the same way. I'm listening to this podcast that I'm I'm enjoying so much called Ghost Church, where this podcaster comedian goes to in, look into American spiritualism that's yeah. centered in a in a with some people in Florida. And I actually really like it. I like the way spiritualists talk, but I just don't buy any of the medium stuff or talking to the yeah, dead yeah, yeah. or even coming. Because you just think, I don't know, there have been so many people who have died. If all people have still access to this plane that we live on, why do you need somebody with a four-year certificate to be able to get access to that? Like, what <laughs> what kind of system is this? Uh, that, yeah. And only yeah. some yeah. of us get it, and then it's only some people, and it's none of the important ones. I don't know. It just feels like yeah. if that were the that, case— that- then pass the smell test. Yeah, there would just be a lot more. We, you yeah. wouldn't be, yeah. you wouldn't be guessing about about such things. We'd have, we'd have so many. Well, okay, so we will at least for today, and we'll wait and see. You know, the the the, the mighty people in the comments, and and I'm very interested in you know people's uh, comments on this. Uh, feel free to send it because I, I had like seven different people message me in the last day or two saying, "Hey, did you see this stuff about UFOs?" For for some reason, they think that we might be interested in such things. So. Yeah. All right. Yeah. There we are. Um, oh, I, I, don't get me wrong. I'm interested in it. I just don't. I, oh. I just don't. Uh, don't. You know, haven't thought about it that much in, mm-hmm. you know, lately. I, just, you know, no. I think it's a. It's a. It's a fascinating question. But, but I, I'm just skeptical. I'm just really skeptical for, of, of any claims to things like that. Yeah. Yeah. And and you're not skeptical like a good scientist is skeptical. You're saying you're skeptical like yeah, this just doesn't doesn't really even even rise to the level of yeah yeah right N- nothing that i've seen in my life makes me think huh <laughs> maybe there's something to that you know i've never seen anything like that that makes me really question my 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 innate skepticism about it huh i'm just wanting to make sure we're not hearing an echo i see some people in um are saying that they're hearing an echo. Are you hearing, are people hearing an echo from you? I sure hope that's not the case. I'm not getting an echo myself. Okay. Uh, well, Paul, uh, tell us a little bit here about um, your, uh, this article about uh, finding black holes, because black holes are, is the other more more interesting part of, of our conversation. Today. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to see if I've got a change, of, change yeah. of setting here. So you have at it, my yeah. friend. Yeah, so... Um, a few years back, I don't know if you remember, um, again, if uh, Dan was around, we could put a nice picture up. But a few years back, we got our first actual image of a black hole. Um, and this one, this black hole was, you know, I don't know, a couple hundred million light years away. And it, granted, it's a big black hole. It's one of the, the, the larger ones. Um, five billion times the mass of the sun or something like that. But it turns out that... Um, ver- Almost every galaxy we believe, uh, whether it's a spiral galaxy or sort of a, just what we call an elliptical galaxy or whatever, most major galaxies, if not all of them, have black holes at their centers. And what has recently been done is uh, a photograph of our own black hole at the center of the Milky Way galaxy was taken. Um, it's a nice image too. You can see the, uh, what's called the shadow, sort of the, the, the spot where the actual black hole is, and you can see the radiation around it. Um, so it's a, it's a lovely picture and it's just been published in, just this last week, um, of the, uh, the, and we've been trying to get this image for a long time and it took quite a long time to process it. Um, uh, the data was actually taken about five, four or five years ago, but it took a long time to process the data and finally
but that's the story. That's that's the basic story. We have a nice image of the black hole at the center of the Milky Way galaxy, about four million times the mass of the sun, something like that. So, how do they? When I saw that that image, and people should should Google it, uh, how do they get a picture like that and know that? That that's a black hole. This is one of the things I've, you know, you've helped me to think through is sometimes astrophysicists are talking about things like uh, the data that they get back. And then other times they talk about pictures and images. How, how does that work? How, how do they get images yeah. of this stuff? Two, two words for the same thing. That's all I really mean. The data that we received was converted into an image, basically. And... um well, there's a several reasons why we why we think it's a black hole. Well, we've known there's a black hole in the center of our galaxy for decades. That that is not uh, was not in, in in question. So it's not like we took this picture and discovered through this picture that there was a black hole. We've known there was a black hole at the center of our galaxy. We just never had a good image of it until now. Um, so. It's not, the news is not that we have a black hole in the center of our galaxy, but that we have a picture of it. Oh, I see. And and how do they how do they collect that picture? What what this this is not our new this is not the new technology that's that's up. You know, this isn't the uh, the web, uh, right? This is uh, this is a different one. Yeah, this is um, a, a collection of maybe eight different it's radio telescopes around the world, which basically exp- you know, to pointed them pointed uh, at this black hole for I don't know how many hours or days in a row they did, but basically it's like a long exposure picture, and they and they did it from all over the uh, the Earth, and so there was constant exposure to it because these radio telescopes are all around the Earth, and so that's how we did it. It's I can't remember the name of the network of of telescopes, but basically it's about eight radio telescope. Yeah, hey, I, I just want to just want to chat to the people here. Yes, we know there's an echo, friends. Thank you for your for your comments uh, and for pointing that out. I'm trying to fix it, and I don't know why it is happening. It hasn't happened before, and it's happening now, and I don't know why. So, um, Paul's going to keep talking. I'm going to try to fix it. Uh, what we will do, because we also record this on a separate audio piece, we will repost this whole thing with corrected audio at some point. But we will get on it. So, uh, John and Steve and uh, Dave and Betsy, thank you so much for uh, for helping on that. And Paul, I'm going to be not unattentive to you. I am attentive to you. Okay. Uh, but I'm okay. going to be trying to see where this particular setting is. Um, okay. That's that's causing that's, fine. that's causing this problem. All right. So so remind us the importance of the black holes, would you? Well, the black holes are important uh, <laughs> just because, um, unlike the aliens that are real and um, completely mind-blowing, they are uh, basically regions of space where gravity is so powerful, gravity is so strong that not even light can escape it. Hmm. Uh, there's a thing called the escape velocity. The Earth has an escape velocity. So if we forget about like uh, the drag effects of the atmosphere, if we go outside and we take a ball and we throw it up, Mm -hmm. it'll come back down. If we throw it harder, faster, it'll also come back down, but it'll take longer. The harder we throw it, the longer it takes to come back down. And there is a speed about 11 point, maybe I'll say round it down to six, seven miles per second. Okay. If we throw a ball like at seven miles per second upwards, it will never come back. It will have achieved what we call escape velocity. It got far enough away from the Earth that it got far that... enough away with the Earth and was going fast enough to where it never actually returned. Because as you get far from the Earth, gravity gets weaker and weaker and weaker, and so the pull is less and less. If you start it off with enough speed, it will escape the Earth's gravitational pull altogether. Okay, And so that speed of seven miles per second is known as the escape velocity of the Earth. It's less on the moon. Different planets have different escape velocities based on their mass and their mm-hmm. size. So suppose we can make the Earth smaller, like make it, you know, half the size. Okay. Same mass, but we make it like crush it to sure. half the size. Okay, uh-huh. Escape velocity will go up. We'll have to throw something harder because the gravitational field will be stronger. So why is that? Why, why if, 
the mass is the same, but the size is different. Why does the gravitational effect increase? Because we are on average closer to, if, if you imagine the Earth made up of a bunch of little particles, each, yep. each pulling uh, at the ball. You know, if yeah. you think of the Earth as, as, a, as a collection of a bunch of little point particles all pulling at the ball, when you crush the Earth smaller, you are on average closer to every one of those attracting particles, right? The, the ball is closer to the mass of the Earth on average. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And sure. so the gravitational, gravitational sure. force increases as the distance in decreases. So as you make the Earth smaller and smaller and smaller, it becomes harder and harder and harder to escape its gravity. Okay. All right. So if you made the Earth about the size of a grape, okay, if you took all the junk in the Earth and smashed it to about the size of a grape, then the escape velocity would be faster than the speed of light. A black hole. Nothing's getting out of there. It would be a black hole. That's correct. So this black hole that there's a fo- that there's this picture of, but again, it's a rendering, right? It's not a it's not a f- it's not a photo or it's not a actually captured it's, image. Oh, it's an it's an image. Okay. It's not visible light. It's not the same. You know, our eyes can only see a very very super narrow range okay. of wavelength. But there's a lot of light outside of that range that we can't see. Okay. It's a perfectly real image of light, not light that our eyes have to be sensitive to, but it's an actual real image of, of, uh, made with, you know, light, Okay, but not light that we can see. I mean, it's just, there, there's something in my mind that gets bent when you think somehow they've taken a, an image, uh, some version of a photo of a black hole, like of a thing of which light can't get out of, right? And I know right. that, you know, you see right. sort of around it, and at least in the image that I saw, you see something around it, and you see a dark, a dark center. So can you say a little bit more about, about gravity itself? Because um, yeah. in my mind, and, and I've, you know, as I've been thinking in my adulthood about gravity and all, I, it's been very helpful to separate it from magnetism, Or like if you put a magnet by a little piece of metal and you get those just close enough, it pulls it. Yep. But that's not what gravity is, right? Gravity is not pulling. So when we say if you throw a ball up or shoot a rocket or something up in the air and it, 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 the pull of the earth, it's not pull like you would think of a physical rope pulling or something or a cable or of magnetism, magnetic attraction pulling it. How does one think about pulling in the gravitational sense? Well, it, it is a pull. It, it, in that sense, it's it's a hmm. force like any other force. It has okay. it, it's a pull. Very now now the origin of it is different, but the effect is the same as the, as the paper clip you're talking about, and hmm. uh, it's always attractive, right? There's 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 no that we know of. There's no you know negative gravity that pushes objects apart gravity as we know it is always attractive um but yeah it is it is a perfectly real force just like just like magnetism Hmm. and all the rest so again the mechanism is different but the effect is the same when people are flying in a spacecraft i mean the real people flying in a spacecraft not the not the pretend aliens are flying in a spacecraft when people are flying in a spacecraft and they get closer to the earth right because they're in the atmosphere and they're orbiting do they feel does the does the aircraft feel a pull like as it gets closer like or is it just so gradual that you don't really so are you talking about like like people in a say in the space station or somebody in like the uh, space shuttle re-entering yeah, the yeah, atmosphere. Yeah, we, you, know, you shoot up in a rocket or something, you kind of get out of it. Now you're up there floating. As you get closer to the Earth, and you're now going to speed up as you're, you know, as you're... Yeah, if... if is if it like, the, whoa, if, here we go. Now, if, if, if it's a powered vehicle like the, the, the uh, space shuttle, then you'll start to feel your own gravity because it's providing <laughs> some lift. It's providing some lift against the fall right against its natural tendency to fall Hmm. but if you're like in a 
if you're in a uh, one of those little uh, capsules, you know, this landing out in the out in the ocean, yeah. like back in the Apollo era, until you had until you put the parachutes up, you're until you do that, you're you're floating inside that thing. And when once you get closer to the Earth and you start to feel the pull, do they feel a pull like mag like a magnetic pull? Does it feel nope, anything nope, like that? No, nope, because what's happening is, is until you put on the parachutes, the capsule is falling and speeding up, right? As it falls faster yeah. and faster mm -hmm. towards the ocean, but you are too. Sure. So you're sure. both you're inside. You're both falling and you're both accelerating at the same rate. So relative to the capsule, you're not moving at all. So you're floating inside the capsule until you put the parachutes on, the capsule slows down and pushes up against your feet. I see. See what I'm saying? Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. Or against your butt, you'd probably be sitting down at that point, but you know what I'm and, saying. And probably strapped in, yeah. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be, that would be quite a jolt when those parachutes first open up. When, when, when they yeah. were first putting, uh, you know, the trips up into our atmosphere together, launching yeah. people, you know, NASA and all this, even before we got all the way to the moon, how much worry was there ab about that kind of thing? Like, did they, did we feel like we knew gravity well enough to manage all that? Or was it like, yeah. look, we yeah. don't know what's going to happen. Could rip this thing yeah. apart. Like what? No. We we had that. Uh, that well, I don't think it was ever an issue. Gravity was, you know, first sort of cracked in some way by uh, by uh, Mr. Uh, Newton, and then um, yeah. and it was pre and he did a pretty good job. He was pretty thorough. But the, you know, a few decimal places in, things looked a little fishy, and there were a couple places where hmm. his predictions didn't quite work out. And that's what Einstein basically ended up patching up in 1915. So basically, since 1915, we've had a really thorough. You know, almost over to over a hundred years ago, really thorough understanding of of gravity. And is is gravity one of those constants? Like, if you get near another planet, uh, with somehow knowing what the mass is and all, you've you've got it nailed. It's just going to yeah. be the same wherever you are. It's it's a consistent. Yeah, yeah as far as we know, gra hmm. the gravity is hmm. the same pretty much everywhere. You know, as far as we can tell, everywhere in in, in the universe. Um, and that's actually one of the reasons we knew there was a black hole getting back to that in the center of the galaxy is because we can't see the black hole itself, right? It's black. Light can't leave it. Right. But what happens is the gravity is so strong that gas and dust and anything in the environment of the black hole is constantly going to be being pulled into it and orbiting around it. And when stuff gets close to a black hole, usually it gets so hot uh, that it emits light. And that's what we're seeing in the picture. We're seeing the environment around the black hole. Yeah. The, 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 the stuff that's heated up the gas and dust around it. And we can actually, we, we can actually uh, over time, we can see stars very close to it, orbiting it. And we can using what we know about gravity, Einstein's theory of gravity, we can see that these stars are number one, very close, but also, um, must be orbiting something with an enormous mass. So it was really Einstein's general relativity, you know, this 1915 theory of gravity that we use to let us know that there's a black hole at the center of the galaxy because of the speeds at which these stars are orbiting this, this unseen object mm -hmm. um, are, are such that it's, it must be a black hole. And why doesn't that black hole just suck everything in that's, that's, around it like why is there stardust that's sort of spinning around it and oh well, it, it does it does it just it's just quite slow and there's a lot of a lot of stuff around it you know this thing is still quite big this black hole is probably about the size of um mercury's orbit from side to side sort of think about okay the you know the size of mercury's orbit that's about the the radius of mercury's orbit is about the same as the radius of the black hole so it's pretty big it's, it's, it's pulling in a lot of material all the time. So that, so that's how we know it's there. I just love that for you, there's a scale in your brain that's like, hey, just think about like the size of Mercury's <laughs> orbit. And that's probably the size. I'm like, I have li literally no concept of the size of Mercury's or orbit. But I nodded my head and said, uh -huh. oh, yeah, okay, yeah. So about the size of Mercury's <laughs> orbit. 
So, in other words, it's pretty big by our standards. So, so why know? why is that slow? Uh, I I guess I was thinking well, that a black the rate hole, which material actually falls into it, is slow, but it because it has so much what we call angular momentum. It's it, it it's not going straight into it like it doesn't. Oh. There's a high. There's a lot of rotation happening at the center of the galaxy. A lot of it, and so this this material is not just falling straight into it. You know, it's actually spiraling in very slowly huh. into it. so so the rate at which stuff's going into it is not that high but it's high enough to you know to to show up and uh heat the material up and stuff like that enough for us to see it wow that is um yeah it's i mean you don't want to be you you wouldn't want to be there. It's it's not a fun. It wouldn't be a very pleasant uh, environment for us. But black holes are kind of cool, aren't they? I mean, when you really start. Yeah. I, I mean, there's something about, and I guess it's because in my mind they they confuse with dark matter, which feels like this thing we don't really fully understand, but is some force that's dominant in the in the universe. Yeah. That's not a black hole, though. We've got a pretty good nope. idea of what a black hole is. So dark matter. Yeah as a sort of cover language for, you know, we don't really know what's going on over there. Right. Right. Yeah. A, a black hole is normal matter just crushed to a very small, very high density. That's all. Hmm. It, it, it belongs to when we talk about the mass energy of the universe, black holes are not, I mean, they're accounted for in the, in the regular matter category. So George, George asked this, this question that I was trying to frame up in my own, in my own head. Uh, George says, uh, where does all the stellar debris the black hole consumes, where does it go? Where does well, all that, question, like what, what's it, in the, what, what's in that black hole? What's, what's the, what's the best guess? We don't, it's just, just, it gets crushed into a, essentially a point is there's, there's, you can't stop gravity. We, we don't know where it goes. We, we can't see. And there's this, there's this limit i mean we can't see the if you had a black think of it this way if you had a black hole without any junk around it it would just be a big black thing it would just be a region of space that's just black and the boundary is not a hard boundary right it's just this region is a dark and so we are blocked from seeing what's inside it's forever it's forever kept from us Okay, so in access, that sense, it, it is it, it is hidden. I mean, it, there, there is a hidden sense, but not because we don't understand or have a good guess right. at what the forces right. are that have made it happen. Right. But what's right. going on? Because without light, so does it not let? Because light is one thing, right? Light waves, as we talk about them, that our eyes mm -hmm. see and so on, or one frequency. But radiation is another form of light. Is that right? Yeah, you know, it all depends. When you say radiation, okay. uh, sometimes you mean light. Sometimes you mean, uh, typically, though, I think that means light, just like radio waves and X-rays, gamma rays. Those are all the same thing as light Yeah, that we see, just longer or shorter wavelengths than we can see. Right, and, but it doesn't even, you, there's not even a way to detect those things, ultraviolet no, rays. No, because it all, travels at the same, it all travels at the speed of light. And none of it can get out. None uh, of it. Nothing. No information can get out outside of that sphere. Whatever goes in, it's it's essentially cut off from the universe forever, and we can have no knowledge of it once it passes that that boundary known as the event horizon. I feel like I was getting it for a minute, and now that last comment opened up a whole <laughs> whole new dark closet. Um, <laughs> Light. It's a one-way trip. It's a one-way trip. Um, yeah. Light can go in. Stuff can go in. Matter can go in, but nothing can come out. Not only that, but when it, but but once it passes the surface of that sphere, that 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 event horizon, it is lost to our knowledge. Huh. Forever. So gra um, gravity, gra gravity has an effect on light waves. I guess this is where my mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what is a light wave yes. that gravity can have an, well, an effect on? What uh, if, if if you think of gravity in the sense of Newton? Okay. 
uh, then an object must have mass to be to be affected by gravity. Right. Okay. Right. But if you think about it from Einstein's point of view, the uh, theory of relativity, we don't think of mass in the same way. We don't think uh, now we don't think of gravity in the same way. Gravity affects light. Huh. And in fact, what, how does it affect we, light we, in this in this you know Einsteinian way? What if it's not if it doesn't have to have mass? What what is being affected? What the what is being affected is the space around the object. So. Think of it this way. Uh, okay, are we are we now this, in master's degree level here? Are you te- is this no, what you no, teach no, no, at, the, no. at the at the at the college I, I level? I teach this. This is astronomy one hundred and one. Okay, oh, it's a simple image gosh. here. Now, right. now there, there are limits. Right. There are limits to the analogy, but hang with me. Okay. Imagine you've got a great big trampoline. Okay. Okay, you got that right. That's that's not too advanced. I have one right? in my backyard. Now, do you? Do you have a bowling ball? Uh, no, but I have a heavy, heavy cylinder ball sort of thing. A garden, okay, but you've garden seen ball. a bowling ball. You know what a bowling ball is. <laughs> I have held a bowling ball. I have thrown a bowling ball. <laughs> okay. I have good, polished good. a bowling now, ball. I have stuck my have fingers really... inside of a bowling ball that other people stuck their fingers in and didn't think a thing of it. It's really quite a, <laughs> quite a disgust. Like you'll think about when you go bowling, you'll think about your shoes. Like, oh my gosh, I'm putting yeah. on these shoes someone else wore. And you literally have a pair of socks on when you're bowling. Yes, that's true. And you're freaking out, at least people like me freaking out. But then you go grab that bowling ball just sitting over on the yeah, rack over there. Okay, stick so your hand right balls, in. It. Actually, a, a bowling ball. Okay. You got a bowling ball. Okay. And you got a ping pong ball. You've also know what a ping pong ball is. Now imagine Hell taking that knows. ping pong ball, the ping pong ball, and rolling it across the big trampoline from one one side to the other. It goes in a straight line, right? Yep. Just goes in a straight line. That's like a that's like a photon. That's like a light particle. Okay. Okay. Straight line. Because a photon has very little weight and mass. Right. Right. But it has, it has some. No. It has, it has zero mass. Okay. Okay. That's why I'm confused. Okay. So zero mass okay. and a proton. Zero mass. So so light is just would in the absence of anything else on the trampoline, the light will go in a straight line. The the ping pong ball will go in a straight line. Now, what I want you to do is to take that bowling ball and place it right in the middle of that trampoline. It will sag down. Mm -hmm. It will curve the space. It will curve the trampoline. Yeah. Now, take that ping pong ball again and roll it right past the bowling ball. It will follow the curve of the space. It will follow the curve of the trampoline, right? It's not being gravitationally attracted to the bowling ball, but the bowling ball has affected the space around it. It has curved the space around it. So a photon traveling the shortest distance through curved space makes a curved line. It curves. Got it. Mass affects the space. Mass curves the space around it. And that includes your mass, but the curvature of the space around your body is so small that it's not detectable. So, so a, that's what gravity is. A photon in, in has no ma- has no mass, but right. somehow space has mass. No, space has no mass. How is space then being? What is the mass of the object, the Earth or the black hole? Mm-hmm. Upon what is it? displaying its force uh, of I mean, uh, on I mean, space like what in the analogy what asking, of the of the what you're asking is what is space i guess so because in the in the uh trampoline in the backyard when our little grandson just the other day this happened this very thing happened we had these little light balls light little plastic you know throw balls they're so light you just roll them across the trampoline and we all, before he gets you really in, did this. we really did it. We throw these little wow. light colored balls into the trampoline. Then Wesley Puck climbs up, gets in the trampoline. And when he's there in the middle, it starts to sag. Then every time you roll a ball, it goes right to him in the middle. Right. So that exactly. happens. That it happens. Spirals all in. All the time. So that's, that's what I was, that's what I was picturing. Um, I get that. Uh, I, I hold, I hold that in my brain as a, as the, the way gravity works. What I'm realizing I don't know though. 
I know what the fabric of the trampoline is. So I can see how that's being curved, stretched. stretched. What is the fabric of space that allows for something of mass? Because if I put a thing of mass, Mm -hmm. Wesley Pucker, a bowling ball, on top of another thing of mass, the trampoline floor, right. those two, I, they're affecting each other. But in this space being affected, it doesn't have any mass, but the thing that does have mass, the Earth or the black hole, right. upon what right. is it right. What is it pulling if it's not... You see, you see where I'm going? Like, is this a, yeah, is right. this, is and, this and a real one, wondered question, or is this like, oh, that's on no, page 412 no, no, of the textbook, and you turn to that, and there it is. <laughs> no, it's a good question, but it just, it just exposes one of the limits of the analogy, basically. Okay. Um, be, that's all. It's just there, there's no equivalent mass to space. But the, what, what it does point out is that space is not what we th- see. We think of it as this sort of static background thing that goes on at forever in all three dimensions okay right with the, 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 it has no effect it's just sort of a stage right that that the, all the actors are playing on that's how we think about space but it turns out that that space is not that way that it actually can be stretched and, and twisted and so forth but what is it it's, what 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 <laughs> okay, he just threw his hands up. Uh, 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 um, no, it, no, yeah, it, it, it's like the other day when you were like, you know, I seem like a few. We were talking about particles. You know, like, but what is stuff? What is? Yeah, this is essentially like an question. electron. It's like, you know, th- there is a science. There is a point at which we're like, we're just dealing with definitions here. You know. So we know space yeah. is. Um, we know space is, and that it can be, and that it is warped and twisted by uh, mass. Yes, that it is that it is affected by mass, and that it affects mass as well. It affects, you know, when the Earth going around. I mean, imagine that bowling ball sitting in the middle of your trampoline uh-huh. and getting and getting like a like a baseball or something and getting it into a perfect orbit so where it just yeah you know, there's no fr- there's no friction imagine between the ball okay. and the uh trampoline you can imagine getting a getting a baseball and throwing it in at just the right angle just the right speed to where it would maintain a circular orbit around the bowling ball now in reality right there's air friction there's friction with the trampoline and it spirals into the bowling ball sure but if you got rid of all the friction you could get it into a nice stable orbit. That's what the Earth is doing around the sun. The the Earth is simply following the curved space around the sun. It's being affected by the curved space around the sun. That's the way that we picture it. And uh, and when and, we uh, and and when you describe space like that, that's of technical difference than when we just talk about what's in outer space or what's in space. Right. Like that, that term space, when we say it's just sort of the area, area in between, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. not what, what's meant in this conversation about right, space right, being right, bent. Right. Is, is that right? Like I'm it's about, I'm talking about a, the, t- the technical kind of, you know, three dimensions, X, Y, and Z, you know, um, and it's the space in this room. It's not, it's not just a space out there. It's, it's, it's space as a, as a universal sort of stage that everything is happening on but the stage is not is not static the the stage itself is part of the part of the uh, action that's the point uh like like does a a pliable young fresh 19 or 20 year old mind in college just grasp this stuff faster than a rigid old you know yeah, probably dying gray matter, or, or do people just go along with it? And well, that, you know, and... no, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I think, I think, you know, I've had some students, you know, whose base, whose basic uh, attitude towards this is, you know, is this going to be on the exam? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, yeah. But then I had, then I had the others who are more like you, who sit there and just sort of, you know, get this. <laughs> 
get this stunned look on their face and kind of stare out at middle distance. And, you know, it was like you can see their brain collapsing. That has also happened. So it, it, it depends on the student. Well, and it's, it's like all the things. I don't think it's an age thing. It's like all the, that's, I think you're probably right. It's it's like all the things of, I don't know, beauty and goodness that when you really turn your mind to them and start thinking about them, it, the, the more you start to understand pieces of it. You know, this would be true of art or music or love or compassion or right. empathy, you know, whatever, all the things. When you start really spending a little time around them, it really starts to push your your mind to ask, you know, to ask yourself, what's exactly, uh, how how does that, how does that work again? Um, yeah. You know, I, uh, and sometimes just having enough, uh, having it actually work just is a salve for all of those worries. I, I was in New York earlier this week. And <laughs> what do you mean? Wait, 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 before I, I want to tell your story, but what do you mean have it work? Well, just to have it work the, as a salve. I like that. I'm trying to figure out what you mean. So um, I, I was in New York and uh, I was walking you know, th- over to, to my hotel and I, I really had to go to the bathroom uh, and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's like a mile walk to the hotel. And, and in New York, unlike some other places, there are no public restrooms. Like you could go into a bar or something else. Right. Yeah. And I thought, I was thinking if, if somebody had just paw, if we didn't have major cities like New York and someone said, Hey, here's what I think we're going to do. We're going to build this city and there's going to be like 20 million people that are going to live in this 10 mile compressed area. It's going to be skyscrapers. You just describe New York. And then someone says, are there going to be bathrooms? And then someone says, no, no, no. Like Starbucks will have one. Maybe that, <laughs> maybe that little place over there, but no, we're not going to have any public restrooms other than in a couple of parks. We would all say, unlike, can't. unlike in cities in Europe, you had to yeah. have public. Right. Yeah. Right, we would say you can't do that. That city is not going to work. No, the, the, there's no way the city is going to work. Like that's just you. You have to solve that from the start. No, you don't. It works just fine. If you said to someone, "Hey, you know what it takes for you to fall in love? Levels of compatibility. Somebody close enough in age. Somebody yeah. that lives nearby you. If you just started doing the statistics of what it takes to meet someone, fall in love, spend your life together, and be happy, you're like." That's never happening. Never going to happen. Never going to happen. Happens all the time. There's something about the cities like that work. People do fall in love. Uh, Children do survive. Like all these things make you just say like, well, I know I could. I don't really understand all the machinations that could have come together, but it just works. And somehow, and it feels like some of this is like, look, the, mathematical descriptions that we now know what gravity is, that it bends space time, by the way, one word, which we can talk about later, right, 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 right. but that it's bending that and that's what's allowing light and other things to move or the earth to orbit. It's not magnetic poles or anything. The fact that the math works and everything just makes people, that's the salve, right? The, the salve, yeah. salve says, okay, yeah, it's okay. No, it, it actually, yeah. It, and look it at and works. look at all the things we can do because of it. That's proof that it actually works. Um, but when you when you're not uh, when you just sort of come at it, I bet you know maybe this is what theoretical physicists do all the time, or maybe they've set this all aside. But when you sort of just stop and think, like, yeah, but what what is it again? <laughs> again, like I don't know. You start reverse engineering it, like you do the city of New yeah, York. Yeah, 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 yeah. Breaking uh, it down. Yeah, it it seems Another impossible. Thing- that reminds me of the of, of the list of requirements to have basically sustained life on a planet. Great. So that is a long list. And it is you if you looked at it, you said that would never happen. But it seems to have occurred at least once. Hmm. <laughs> yes. You know, I mean, it's and it's a lot more than just having, you know, the Earth be a certain size and orbit within a certain distance of the sun. It's a whole lot more than that. Um. Is you know, fifteen different things, maybe seventeen different things, completely independent things. Yes, know, that that seem to have lined up for us here. It's so, really, it's just, it's 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 quite amazing. Hey, uh, the, George has another another comment that I, I want to th- throw up here. Um, he says, "I realize this isn't related to outer space, but related to the inner space." 
that he was when you were discussing gravity. He says, "How is terminal velocity limited to 122 miles per hour?" So apparently, George knows a thing or two about about all this. I'm going to put that back in. Uh, why does a one Why does a 500 pound person have the same terminal velocity that a 100 pound individual have? So I'm guess, guessing this is true whether it's a person or an individual. But why would yeah. 500 pound object and a 100 pound object have the same terminal velocity. And if you could just briefly, what is a terminal velocity velocity and what, what, what's that have to do? Terminal with? velocity is what I was referring to earlier. Um, the speed required for something to have to, to be removed from the uh, pull of gravity. Got altogether. it. So it's terminal in the sense that that's the velocity, which it would terminate gravitation. Oh, no, no, pull. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. That's escape velocity. I, I, I was back with, I was reading that as if he had said escape. No, dip. terminal velocity is different. Um, terminal velocity is the, um, if you take an object from a tall building and drop it, say okay. a baseball, <laughs> okay. okay, it will fall and it will speed up for yes. a while, but eventually it'll reach a set constant speed because the force of air friction up on it is equal to the force of gravity pulling it down. Okay. When those are equal. The forces are equal and it won't speed up and it'll keep moving, but it won't speed up anymore. That's known as terminal velocity. Okay. The, the fastest speed that in the earth's atmosphere, something can move yes. toward the earth, no matter how far it's way it started, no matter how much it weighs, it's going to hit a certain speed. And that's that. Yes. Right. And it's, and it's because of the atmosphere. It's because of the at atmospheric resistance. So when a so, meteor comes rushing in, that's different? Uh, or the space shuttle comes flying uh, back in yeah, before the, they the, pull the... the meteor would probably never... I doubt that it would ever be in the atmosphere long enough to achieve terminal velocity. Okay, okay. But if you take like a, you know, take like a, like a, like a... a if you see a bug... You know, if a bug falls off the wall towards the floor, it immediately reaches terminal velocity. And when it, it doesn't matter if it falls a foot or if it falls 20 feet. It's going to hit the floor at the same speed because it's so light and it's kind of spread out. So it reaches terminal velocity quickly. But if you drop an arrow straight down, it'll take a whole lot longer for it to reach terminal velocity because it's so aerodynamic. So it depends on the shape of the thing and how much it weighs. And by terminal velocity there, you don't mean it's going to reach the limit, the 122 miles per hour that George no. referred to. You're saying it's going to reach, it's it's going to go as fast as it would ever go, no matter how long it was falling. Yeah. Right. That's right. So. Oh, wow. This is just blowing my mind. Yeah. Well, so and, it depends, and weights, well, and really weights not the on, thing. On, no, weight's not the thing. It really has, to, I mean, it's related to weight, but it's also related to the shape of the thing. You know, oh. because if you take a, you know, because if, if you have something that's kind of, uh, got it, like a plate, if you drop a plate, it's got a huge cross sectional area that's feeling resistance, right? So if you drop a plate, if, you, if, if you're holding it sort of uh, parallel to the ground yep. horizontally, it's going to achieve escape velocity. I mean, it's going to achieve terminal velocity very quickly. Yep, and it'll be slow. But if you turn it sideways and let it go, it'll go a lot faster before it reaches terminal velocity. Because it'll be going a lot faster. Because air, the, the atmosphere is going to slow it up. Yeah, slow it up, up a lot less. If, if 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 you have the if you have the plate parallel to the ground, sort of horizontal, sure. it's going to achieve escape velocity very quickly. Yeah. Okay. Because. Yeah, because it's not aerodynamic that way. If you turn it sideways, it's a lot more aerodynamic. So and why? It's going to so go a lot faster before. It I got that. That's fly. okay. That's really helpful. So to George's question, why is it 122 miles an hour? Why? Why do you know why? Why can is that gravitational pull of the Earth like on other planets? Would things I've, I've never heard that before, but it kind of makes some sense to me that okay. it would be that there would be some limit to it, simply because the atmosphere is only so thick. Ah, sure. Right. It's only so thick and it gets thinner as you go up. Um, so it can only resist so much. Huh. Wow. Um, and has a certain density. So so maybe there is a limit to the terminal velocity because of the fact that the atmosphere has a limited depth. Okay. Huh. Yeah. Well, that good. must be the answer. It's a good that. good good question from, from George that he knew that 
the yeah Georgia and I'm Georgia not, it has to do it has to do with not just with the weight the the, the weight is, is is not it's a combination of weight and shape that that determine terminal velocity I see so some for some reason George knows that and people have determined that and there is some set relationship to this velocity something can fall that's related to the atmosphere of the earth and the gravitational pull. Do you know, do things going into a black hole, are they, if they got near a black hole, do they go right to the center and do they, would they like travel really? It depends on their initial trajectory. If, if, if it's, if it's, if, if, if you sort of take, you know, take a baseball and throw it into a black hole, if you throw it right towards the center of it, it'll go straight in. Okay. But if you throw it off to the side, it's going to maybe orbit for a while and spiral in. So it depends on how you initially throw it. And if you just release it from rest, it'll be pulled straight into the black hole. Unless it's, a, unless it's if the black hole is rotating, it, it will not. But if the black hole is not rotating, whole different question. The black hole is not rotating, then the baseball, if you release it, it would fall right straight into it. So there's rotating black holes and non-rotating yeah, black holes. Pretty much, pretty much all of them are going to be rotating to some degree, and that complicates things. And we can see that. We can see. <laughs> Thank you for no, laughing. No, it's, 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 it's just based on the principle that pretty much everything – Every star, every planet, everything has some rotates. Amount of rotation to it, and the and the, and the closer it, the, the smaller it gets. If it falls in on itself, the faster it rotates. Like a like a uh, like a ice skater, you know, she has her oh, arms yeah. out and then she pulls her arms and legs and she speeds up. Yeah, yeah. Same thing with same thing with a, with what, a star. What becomes of a black hole once it compresses? You know, is spinning so fast and is all the way down to the center. What what's what what happens? We don't know. We don't know. It's hidden, man. We don't know. We don't know what's going on in there. <laughs> we don't know what's going did, on. Did this uh, this release of the the where we started this picture that's been taken this image that yeah. took years of computation to put together is that the kind of data that we now have that people feel like we're going to start to know more about what's going on in there? Or is yeah. we pretty confident? It may, no have, it may it may have some effect. I mean, there's already been like what just this came out last week. And there's only like ten papers published on it or something. So there's all kinds of stuff you can do with it. Hmm. There, it may have it may be able to help us sort of get glimpses of what might happen. Um, but I think most of most of that most of the value of that image is going to be about uh, the black hole itself, the outside of it, and what happens in the vicinity of a black hole. I think that's where most of the most of the learning is going to come. Well, this is so cool. Hey, um, are are there certain astrophysicists who study black holes? Is is it like uh, the like the medical profession where someone's someone's like has a specialty in black holes? Oh gosh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really. So, uh, Astronomy is broken down into a hundred subfields. Yeah, really. And uh, yeah, and general relativity. Basically, people who study general relativity are going to be doing black holes, um, other things too. But um, oh yeah, there are definitely black holes. I mean, there's black. There are such things as black hole theorists who go to work, do their black hole science, and then come home and you know <laughs> have a drink and go to bed. <clears throat> yeah, they spend their days thinking about black holes. Their their lives, their professional lives, working on this. Absolutely. Do you, do you know Do you know any of those people? Have, do you, do you make acquaintance with? No, no, I don't know any of them personally. But I'm who, who sure tends to employ them. someone who has a black hole specialty? Like what? Where? where? Big big universities, uh, Caltech. Really? Uh, oh yeah, MIT. Huh. Yeah, you know, big big tech schools like that. Big science. Uh, Stanford. So you know, just big, big universities. So somewhere in that world, they believe that knowing more about this matters. Uh, see that, That's right. See that little play on words? Yeah, I, I got it. I got it. Yeah, that was good. Uh, um, that was good. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, the, the truth is we're never, you know, we're never going to know what we need to know. We, we, we never, we, we do not know what we're going to need to know. It's That's a great right. line. We don't know what we're going to need to know. We cannot in principle, know what it is we are eventually going to need to know. 
Wow, Sensei, that was a good one. That's a good place. That's, <laughs> that's a good place to. That's a good place to finish. Hey, thanks all, and especially those of you that tolerated us during the uh, the the audio glitch. And I'm seeing that at least John Moyer is having trouble with some other technical things over on the Christian Left page. I don't know what that's about. Um, uh, we don't control that side. If anyone wonders what it was that happened on the uh, with the sound in my Rodecaster Pro, which is the soundboardy thing that I have here, um, there was there's a setting that is the Rodecaster Pro stereo and the Rodecaster Pro multi-channel, and for some reason mine was clicked to multi-channel, which then was sending Paul's audio back into the very same machine that was sending it out so he said it it heard it and then set it in again and it got in its own little its own little loop feedback loop yeah so anyway if you wanted to know what was going on that was going on and uh so Glad sorry you cracked it. sorry you all had to tolerate it and if you i don't know maybe we'll edit this video and won't even when we re repost this won't even put that part back up but paul thank you thanks for the uh, tutorial and the class today and um sure. uh do you think the UFOs live in the black hole? Is there a chance of that? Is there a chance that there's a whole colony of these in the black hole, and that's why we don't we well, don't know it, them? That is certainly very plausible, Doug. And uh, uh, the, the main question I would have for them is how they get out, because that would be some serious technology right there. Yeah, maybe it's just the force Getting of will. Maybe you know, maybe maybe, maybe that's it. They just, just know how to they're get like out. roach motels, you know. You check in, you don't <laughs> check out. You go. Roach Motels. One way. All right, buddy. Thank you.